One of Tableau's special abilities is how easily you can clean your data. Cleaning is the process of making the data usable for the tool. So you can think of it as a translator. So translating one language to another so two people can have a conversation. In this video, I'm going to go through some of Tableau's built-in data cleansing functions. <laughs> Let's get started with our data cleansing. Now, this data cleansing is really good for um, beginners, people just seeing, well, what actually is data cleansing, right? Well, I'm going to show you. So we have those inconsistencies we talked about. Data cleansing is basically taking the raw data, right, which could have errors, could may not have errors, may not be structured correctly, could not have right, you know, could have bad field names or whatever it might be, have all sorts of issues. And you're converting it and cleaning it and manipulating and doing all sorts of things, right, in order to get it into a usable form, right, whether you're going to use that for data science or visualizations or data analysis or predictive modeling, whatever it is, you're converting it from kind of an unusable state into a usable one. That's really what data cleansing is. And there is a multitude of techniques, right? And it differs from program to program. And the more you learn, the better you get at it, right? So you can have data cleansing SQL, you can have it in Ultrix or all sorts of crazy places. For now, we're going to do it in Tableau, right? And I didn't even mention Excel, but let's do it in Tableau and let's go through this bit by bit. So the first thing is we have an identifier that looks pretty good to me. Um, this LOC, I mean, it's not a really good name, so I'll rename it. Okay, I'm very picky about making sure things are named correctly because a lot of the times, once you have a lot of fields, some of them can sound very similar to one another and you accidentally use the wrong one, right? And it can be a very costly mistake. Now, I'm actually tempted to call this metro or regional. However, I just from eyeballing, I can't actually see all the values that exist. So, a trick you can do is go to sheet one. Okay, because we've already connected to the data set. You can actually start visualizing using this data, but you just won't be able to do as much as you can unless you clean it. So I'm going to bring in that LOC, the location, and if I bring it in here, it will automatically compress it to show me the unique values. There we have it. So we have some null values, metro, other, and regional. I think it's safe to say to call this metro regional. So let's go into data source, and I'm going to rename this metro regional. Okay, so there we have it. That's the first one done. There's not really much else I'm going to do there. The nulls, um, the most I would do is if I'm working with a client, I would go to them and be like, hey, how come there's no, how come some of them are null? And they'll say something like, oh, well, you know, we only really introduced that field halfway through the program, so we don't have it for some of them, right? So then I'll go like, um, well, how do you want me to fill it out? Do you want to do it by state, by location, by interaction method? You know, you try and kind of work with the client to figure out a rule to fill them out. They could say that for certain states, it's automatically this or it's automatically that. They tend to know what's best. For now, we're going to leave them as null. All right, the next one is the customer position. I think that's what I was um, looking to write. So we said before that, you know, there's some inconsistencies with the labeling. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is actually split them. So you can see that the post, oh, that's postcode, customer postcode. Um, the postcode is actually in here. Now, postcode is super important in Tableau because we can use that for visualization. And I'll do a quick demo um, right after this, as soon as we split it. So we always want that in its own field. So splitting is like text to columns in Excel, right? You're basically taking um, a single cell of data and splitting it into multiple cells. So you can kind of make use of the fields. If you use this split versus this split, this one is the automatic split and Tableau would try and guess your delimiter. So if you don't know what a del delimiter is, in this case, it's the comma, right? So the delimiter is what separates the individual data sets. Okay, in this case, the separator is a comma, so we can go here and see how well it does. So go split, and you can see here you got customer position split one and then split two, and it's actually been able to split it successfully. So let's have a look and just eyeball, make sure it did it correctly. You notice I'm checking all the time, just checking, checking, checking. Okay, that looks good. So um, what this means is, well, we don't really need this one anymore. I can actually go ahead and hide it. Right, so we're not deleting the data, right? We're definitely not deleting it on the Excel end because it feeds one way. We're just hiding it here for for our visualization, so we don't have to deal with it later. So we we'll go hide, and now we have them uh, separated. So I'm going to rename this. So I'm just going to double click, or you can just right click rename, 
Let's call this state, and let's call this postcode. There you have it, and let me just scroll down. And you can see we still have inconsistencies, but we're not actually going to fit uh, clean that up here. We're going to use a function once we get to the visualization part on how to clean that. So now we got postcodes, and I'm going to do a quick demo of what you can do with postcodes. So if I convert this to a geographical row postcode, and then I go into a sheet, right? You can see this postcode. If I double click, it will automatically visualize it for me on a map. Okay, so and geographical analysis is super important because it's so much easier to see what's going on here. Like if I was going to look at you know the total delivery fee over time, you know, and put like a color scale here and say, you know, where are we spending most of our money, right? You can see exactly, whoa, what's going on over there? As opposed to if I did, you know, a list and bar charts. Yeah, you can still get it. It's kind of the same thing, but um, geographical location has so much more of an impact, okay? So we'll be covering that much later in the course. All right, pretty cool. Okay, let's go back. All right, so leave that as a string. So then the next one is the date and time. That looks pretty good. I can see that the data type selected is date and time. So you got a calendar and a clock there, which means more likely, uh, more likely, more often than not, it's actually done it correctly. And I can tell just from looking at it. Okay, it looks full, looks pretty good. The one thing you'd have to be careful here is like um, Tableau reads in American format. So you have year, Sorry, it's a month, day, year, as opposed to in Australia, it's day, month, year. So you just want to check that. From experience, I know that um, if it read it incorrectly, you will have spaces here. And the reason that happens is because sometimes, like, let's say you had a month, you know, 20th of the 1st, 2021. Well, the 20th month doesn't exist. So if you have that in your data set, it's just going to blank out. But because here we have it completely full, you know that, okay, it looks like it's read it correctly. Cool. All right. Let's look at the next one. So here we have kind of similar situation that you have uh, three different data types in the same field. We need to split that out to really make use of it. So again, we're going to use that splitting function, but this time we're going to use custom split. In this case, you can actually tell it explicitly what the delimiter is, in which case it's that pipe symbol. Okay, so let's go pipe, right, which is just underneath the backspace button, and you just have to hold shift. And you can say how many times you want to split it. So if we only want the first two characters, uh, first two split, which is corporate notice and the money, we just say first two, right? But in this case, we want everything split, right? So if we go all and split, it will give me all three. But probably to save a step, we shouldn't split the third one because, well, that's really just a duplicate of the first one. Okay, so can we check that? Of course, let's go sheet one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare that identifier. Let's bring that in. And I'm going to compare this interaction method split three, which I know is the third identifier. Right, and again, I'm just going to eyeball. Okay, everything looks good to me. Everything's matching. Okay. Usually what happens is if something doesn't match your eye will catch it. So I, you know, it looks like I'm going pretty fast, but um, what I'm actually relying on is my, the human brain to be able to sense differences, right? Which we're very good at. Okay. Let's go, you know, and it looks pretty good to me. No issues. Okay. I'm convinced. So those two are the same, which means I actually don't need this um, third split. So I should actually go back. Actually, let me go back, 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 right before we did the split. There we go. And I'm going to go custom split. And we're going to split just the first two. Okay, so we don't have to split that third one. Go OK. OK, and what did I do wrong? I think I forgot to put the, <laughs> the delimiter. So the pipe and then first two. OK. So now we have two of them. Pretty cool. All right. So I'm actually happy with this one, the interaction method. So let's rename this interaction method. And then we have this next one. So we have these in brackets. So in accounting terms, um, the brackets usually mean negative. But I've already spoken with my client, which is me, 
right? And the brackets are just a formatting thing. It's not actually negative. So we need to get rid of these brackets. So there's a number of ways you can do it. You can use like a replace function or substitute or something like that. The easiest way is actually just to split it using the delimiters, right? So a little trick is we can just use split again, and it actually splits out the number, right? So we have the number there, which means we can now get rid of this one and just hide it because that's now redundant. We can hide the original one because that's now redundant. And now we're just left with the interaction method and the notice cost. Boom. Pretty cool, right? Okay, next one is, let's have a look at the result. So one of the things I said about the result is how consistent is this really? So what we can do is we can go to sheet one and let's bring in that result. Right, you can see that all those fields that we created, they're not in here. So it's like less clutter, right? As much as you can get rid of clutter. Let's go result and drop it into here. Okay, so there's not that many. And do they have any overlaps? You know, customer details invalid, customer details out of date, refuses to pay, contract terminated, you know, cannot locate address. Uh, international day, no answer at address, refuse to pay. So uh, maybe one or two you can kind of consolidate, maybe. But from the looks of it, the data is actually fine. Okay. And then we have the regional surcharge and notice cost. So what, uh, sorry, not the notice cost, delivery fee and regional surcharge. What I'll do here is take the sum of all of this and compare it to Excel and see what we get. So I'll go sheet one, go delivery fee and just double click. And if I hover, I know the value is 23,618. So I go into Excel, again, checking as we go along. I'm going to go over here to the right and just highlight. Okay, so 23,618, we're good. Let's get rid of this. Let's check the regional surcharge. Okay, 682.5. Okay, let's have a look here. Okay, let's go regional surcharge, and I'm just going to highlight the whole thing. Ah, okay, so this one says 683. So we're missing a 0.5, so it should be 682.5. Now here's a little something with Excel. It, this may be wrong, okay? So one way to verify this, right, is to simply go equals sum. Or actually, let me zoom in there so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, let's go, whoops, too far. Equals sum, and we're going to highlight the whole thing. Okay, and let's see what it does then. Bracket, enter. Okay. And let me, actually, actually, let me do it this way so you can see the formulas and all that kind of stuff just for some of you who want to follow. So I just did a sum, and even this one's saying 683. And again, something weird with Excel is, if I increase the number of decimal places, maybe that can see what's going on. All right, so it's actually 682.5. So it's a rounding issue, right? But again, you just want to check it, make sure. I know it's only 50 cents, but my thing is, as soon as something goes wrong in one place, you now have to check, has it gone wrong in other places? Okay, which means you got to do more quality checks and so on. Okay, which means everything in our data set is basically ready to go except data types, which we'll get to um, soon. And then also this, uh, and I think because I've reorganized it, um, it's gone missing a little bit. But basically, if you go, let's get rid of that. If you go to this very last spot, you also have that, which I'll show you how to filter that out later on. But that's it for this video. Slightly longer than usual, but hope you guys enjoyed the data cleansing and I'll see you at the next video.